The science of man is a description of life that describes truth and throws light on the forgotten decisions or conclusions of old that run people's lives. But don't believe it just because you hear it. Check it out for yourself. When we re-examine our erroneous purpose and make a new purpose to become free to experience the discomfort of meeting the possible challenges in this world, then we are free. The picture of conditioned man clearly portrays the erroneous master decision or conclusion that a baby makes in the process of dying to the uterine world and being birthed into the earth world and its six helper decisions. That it's important to have my way right now and the way to get it is to complain, demand, stick up for rights, please. Obey proper authorities, self-improve, blame. The misconception that the purpose of living is to be non-disturbed will produce continual conflict within that individual until that purpose is re-evaluated and seen for what it is. Error. Error. Only in understanding can there be freedom. Understanding must exist or we are struggling toward an ideal, an ideal which is always an illusion. The struggle toward illusion is the disintegration factor in mankind. In order for mankind to have peace, harmony, and well-being, there must be an understanding of universal law and its application to mankind as an expression of universal law. Law of the universe is of necessity unbreakable and impossible to violate without destruction. It can best be stated with one word, balance. 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 Universal law cannot be evaded, no matter what event takes place. It is balancing to the established balanced design of the universe. This is the perfect law. This law does not punish anyone. Being law, it is impersonal. If an infant puts its hand in boiling water, it is scalded just the same as if you put your hand in boiling water. If a thief plants seed corn in the soil in proper season, waters and tends it, it will produce just as much increase of harvest as it would have for a saint. The increase is direct balance with the minerals from the soil, the water, and the energy from the sun stored in the plant and the care given it. The morals of piety of the planter having no effect on the crop. 
All completed phenomena have four interrelated factors in the establishing of balancing, rather than so-called cause and effect. The unit of the four interrelated factors in mankind are the biological or life principle, the psychological or awareness function of life, the physiological or physical factor, the material body. Activity or function, result. Living man is a functional unit representing the union of intelligence and matter, an individualized expression of intelligence. This intelligence is the source of all knowledge. It knows. Everything it does is correct for the present circumstances as seen, evaluated, and reported to life principle by the awareness. In this unit, adaptation by life is a constant balancing action to four variables. Environment, activity, nutrition, and inner feelings. We're interested in the inner feelings, that which originates from the inner state. When the purpose of living is to be non-disturbed, one is living in a vicious cycle, which originates from the inner state and makes up the greater part of stress emotion within the individual, disappointed because the expectation of an ideal was not realized. If I firmly believe that ideal exists, then I will automatically compare everyone and everything and myself to all these ideals, only to always fall short somehow. We will always be disappointed, for ideal is illusion, and the struggle toward illusion is the disintegrating factor in mankind. Millie works for a large corporation and is sure that one day her importance to the institution will be recognized. The boss has assigned a project to be completed in three days. There is expectation based on ideal or illusion. My lucky chance that this could lead to a huge increase in salary, maybe a big promotion, why I could even receive the Outstanding Job Performance Award. The boss disapproves the completed work and it's rejected. The expectation based on ideal or illusion is not realized. There is disappointment, feeling hurt, much discomfort and feelings of disturbance. So she looks for what to blame. There is anger. I blame him. He thinks I'm a slave. If he paid me more, I'd do a better job. Guilt. Maybe it's me. I should have done more. I should have done a better job. Fear. I don't know what's gonna happen. He may fire me. What will people think? Insecurity. I guess my ideas just aren't important at all. What I say or think. I feel so worthless. This is stress. Stress is what the body reacts to. Whenever we are angry, guilty, fearful, or insecure, we are communicating to life with feeling the misconception that there is an emergency at hand. Feeling is the medium of communication between awareness and spirit. When the purpose of living is to be non-disturbed, 
incorrect information from the misconceptions and preconceived opinions produces a feeling of stress emotion or a false feeling of emergency. When one's purpose of living, whether valid or not, is threatened, this constitutes an emergency, and life responds as though it were an emergency. Awareness communicates this false feeling of emergency to life. Life responds equally, whether real or false information is received from its awareness function to maintain optimum balancing and function of the physical body. When there is no emergency in reality, but the awareness perceives that something painful may be about to occur, or some pleasure is within reach and may be lost, the energy to fight or run is provided just the same. Perhaps we only had our feelings hurt because we were disappointed in something that we felt was the ideal that would make us comfortable and non-disturbed in some way. Life believes its partner awareness and always responds appropriately to the information received by the awareness function. Now that doesn't say that it always does the appropriate thing, but the appropriate thing for the information received from awareness. Life responds to whatever awareness reports. When awareness reports emergency information, life responds, sending tremendous energy by the use of various hormones from the ductless glands, adrenaline, thyroxine, pituitary extract, and a big charge of glycogen from the liver to be used for fuel provided to cope with or to fight or run. In a real emergency, the person will do one or the other using the energy provided exactly, and thus balance is maintained. Health is a constant variable adaptation to the outer environment and the inner feeling in relation to activity. For instance, a man sees a large dog stalking him. He feels a state of emergency, real emergency. The ductless gland system produces hormones to mobilize energy to prepare for flight or fight. The autonomic nervous system contracts the digestive tract and stops digestion. The liver discharges a large volume of its stored glucose into the bloodstream for use as fuel. The large inner blood vessels contract, forcing more blood to the skeletal muscles, plus many more preparations for flight. The man runs, gets to safety, has a feeling of satisfaction. He has used up the mobilized energy. The body is in balance at all times for the state of the environment. This is using awareness for the correct purpose. The man goes his way in health. The second man is a clerk in a large office. He decides that he must gain approval, attention, and meaning for his existence by becoming the department manager. He has a feeling of emergency, false emergency. His body reacts just the same as the man that had the feeling of emergency when seeing the dog stalking him. This man does not fight or run. His body has chemical imbalance, and neuromuscular tension, is nervous, and has occasional symptoms. Finally, he's made department manager. Does he now have a feeling of satisfaction as did the man when he reached safety from the dog? No, he now has a feeling of emergency, worrying about all the added responsibility. So he continues to build 
chemical imbalance and neuromuscular tension. It has now gone from the psychological to the physiological and requires adaptation. This is called illness. Everyone says how terrible it is, but it's really necessary for the adaptation to take place to use up the extra energy. It is not emergency. It is life balancing. This is not to say that one can't improve his or her employment or economic condition without illness. Rather, it's to give another basic principle for observation. Whenever I make my happiness depend on anything or anyone, I have a false feeling of emergency. If our purpose of living is to be non-disturbed, one may be erroneously but effectively perceiving emergencies all day long. Energy to fight or flee is provided but not used because there is nothing to fight and nothing to flee. One may be sitting in a warm room on a very comfortable chair with no physical violence in sight, but inside, seething turmoil. What happens to all this extra emergency energy that's floating around in the body? It must go somewhere and must be used somehow. Awareness automatically precedes this situation, reports it, and life responds by finding a way to use it up. This extraordinary using up of the emergency energy will be experienced in either one or two ways, depending on the person or circumstance. Either unusual behavior, violent binges, or unusual cellular activity. A group of cells in adaptation begin to do something they do not ordinarily do in order to use up this mobilized and unreleased energy from the chemical imbalance and the neuromuscular tension from stress emotion felt as emergency. Unusual cellular activity is known as a change in function. So some aspect of the body begins to function differently. This always results in a change in sensation called pain or symptoms, followed by tissue cell alteration or tissue cell breakdown. We then begin to look for cure. If the purpose of living is to be non-disturbed, these sensations are seen to be yet another emergency and the whole vicious cycle starts all over again. More expectation, more disappointment, more feeling hurt, more what to blame, more stress or false emergency, more chemical imbalance, neuromuscular tension, more adaptation, more unusual cellular activity, more sensation, more breakdown, more look for cure, more expectation, and thus the vicious cycle goes round and round. If this keeps up long enough, these tissue cells that are involved in the unusual cellular activity break down further, producing pathology, and if not reversed, death. Having a feeling of emergency about getting well produces just as many stress products in the body as a feeling of emergency about anything else. As soon as the feeling of emergency is let go, the vicious cycle is broken. Much like a callus on the hand to stress of friction, as long as the friction continues, there's going to be a change in tissue. If the friction quits, the callus soon goes away. 
unusual cellular activity is experienced as symptoms and defined by most people as disease, being not at ease. A great injustice is done when methods are used to banish the symptoms. Symptoms are an indication that life in its wisdom is working to restore balance to the body and is an excellent reminder to check up on misconceptions so corrections can be made. Symptoms are not bad. They may be uncomfortable, but freely experienced will be gone in no time. Life is at work. Balancing. Symptoms are not the problem. They are a sign of the problem. The problem can only be dissolved by the person with the problem understanding it. When the problem is understood, it is dissolved. As this relationship is understood, one will begin to realize that all symptoms are normal adaptation, life's way of restoring the body to health, to chemical balance, and to natural tone. Instead of stress, it relieves stress. Life is balancing. Adaptation, including symptoms, is a great gift. It is part of life, part of living. Man's inner feeling, which is the awareness factor, depends on the physical senses, mental activity, and other impressions. Very early, the awareness makes a fundamental error regarding the physical senses. It decides with feeling that its purpose is to keep the body from discomfort and to gain pleasure and comfort. The comfort that it knew a short time ago in the uterine world before being birthed into the earth world. As the infant grows, these categories expand beyond the physical into mental and emotional and eventually transcendental or the will to par. The wanting to gain pleasure and comfort, to gain attention, to gain approval, to gain feeling needed or important, to avoid pain or discomfort, to avoid being ignored or rejected, to avoid disapproval, to avoid feeling useless or inferior. These four dual basic urges are part of the human experience derived from our senses, and we all have them to some degree. But they are not the purpose of living. They are byproducts of living. Our purpose of living is utterly comprehensive. It covers every activity of life. It cannot be overemphasized that the re-evaluation of one's purpose of living is the absolute foundation of true unification. If the awareness is distorted because of misconception about the nature of things, the evaluations it gives to the life function will be distorted and incorrect. The response then, while appropriate for the information received, will be inaccurate as well, and we will live in chaos, conflict, false feelings of emergency. When we live by misconception, we are living in the vicious cycle, the inner workings of the conditioned self, the conditioned awareness, resulting in disintegration. Could it be said that non-survival is universal law, balancing action based on feelings of stress emotion or feelings of emergency arising from misconception? All completed phenomena 
of universal law are expressions of the four forces, including the present state of health of each individual. If law is considered, man would look to his feelings, which are the result of his concepts of reality. If he found feeling of emergency when there were no actual physical dangers to fight or run from, he would know he was holding a misconception and would take up the task of eliminating it instead of struggling to find a cure for his discomfort. If we work on misconceptions, reevaluate and correct them, we find this work brings strength, real health. When adaptation to improper nutrition, overexertion, the loud and chaotic environment, and most especially one's inner state occurs, we can be thankful we are able to adapt. There is an alternative, the living cycle. In the living cycle, there is accurate perception, accurate feeling, chemical balance, creative action. Let's look at the function of each aspect of man in the picture of man. The human being is composed of several aspects which are designed to work together in harmony. The biological function, or life principle, true intelligence. It is an abstract, however its expressions of intelligence are concrete and can be observed. This is the source of all human vitality. The life force always responds appropriately to the information received by the awareness function. The awareness function, I, is simply a function of life, not a separate identity or thing. Though each is unique and each is a point of view. We usually refer to awareness function by our name, that which we call I, or think of as mind, although a transformed awareness is far more than ordinary mind. Its job is to receive impressions from within and without, body, mind, others, world, life, and to evaluate these with feeling, which is received by the life function. Life always does the appropriate thing for the information received through the physical body. These two functions work together in human form, the physical body. The result is that the physical body carries out all the actions deemed of value by the awareness and appropriate to the evaluation according to the life function. Now let's look at the function of each aspect of man in the picture of man living in the living cycle. When the awareness is passive, receptive rather than resistant, it perceives that which is in the environment, impressions from body, mind, others, world, life, and relays the accurate perception to life principle. Life does the appropriate thing for the information received, which causes the physical body to respond with accurate feeling, causing chemical function to do what is necessary to meet the true condition in the environment, balancing with reality and creative action. This unified process of the living cycle is beautiful to behold. It will never fail you. The harmonious functioning of the whole being depends upon accurate assessment of impressions from the awareness function without misconceptions. 
There are steps to take to correct the misconceptions so that the awareness can evolve to function properly and the human being can live life to his or her full potential in harmony. First is the observation of the purpose of living. Is it false? Is it to be non-disturbed? Is it to make it important to have my way right now and the way to get it is to complain, demand, stick up for so-called rights, to please others, to obey authorities, to self-improve, to blame. We cannot know if our purpose is false until we watch it, until we observe without condemning or justifying. We watch everything we do, watch our feelings and desires. What motives are they based on? What purpose? Is it to gain pleasure and comfort? To gain attention? Gain approval? To gain feeling needed or important? And to avoid any pain or discomfort? Avoid being ignored? Avoid rejection or disapproval? Avoid feeling useless or inferior? Are these four dual basic urges seen as the purpose of living rather than the byproducts of living? Mankind is an expression of balance, not a victim of chance. When one becomes free of all misconception, one can create as an individualized expression of universal intelligence, an expression of universal law. When the awareness is functioning properly, a beautiful union between awareness and life is expressed constantly through the physical body. What can be done to experience harmony as a state of existence, free of misconception? The process is simple, though not easy. Listen to the teaching. Let the awareness absorb it. Be free to ask questions about any of the fundamentals not understood. Check it out. This means act on it by observing both yourself and others without condemnation or justification. Discover the purpose of living. Make a new purpose. A new purpose to become free to experience the discomfort or pleasures of meeting the challenges in this world and all the mundane things in between. Evolve in understanding what I am, where I am, what's going on what I can do.